Advent blessings to you this day. As we continue in our Advent devotional series using the names of Jesus from our Advent tree and using the book Advent in plain sight. Today we take another card off the tree and we discover another name used for Jesus in scripture. This one, the way. Another one of Jesus' I am statements found in John's gospel. Specifically, John chapter 14, verse 6, or Jesus says to the disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Jesus has just told them that he's going to leave them and he's going to go prepare a place for them, a place in heaven that he prepares for all of us because there are many rooms in our Father's house. And Jesus goes to prepare a place, and he will provide us the way to get to that place. Jesus, the way to the Father, the way of the truth and the life. Thanks be to God that Jesus is indeed the way. As we continue in our Advent book, Advent in Plain Sight, today, as we continue in the theme of belts, we talk about empty belts. From Mark chapter 6, verses 7 through 13. Mark chapter 6, verses 7 through 13. And Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them that they should take nothing for their journey except a mere staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belt but to wear sandals. And he added, Do not put on two tunics. And he said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And play, any place that does not receive you or listen to you as you go out from there, shake the dust off the soles of your feet as a testimony against them. And they went out and preached, and the men should repent. And they were casting out many demons and were anointing with oil many sick people and healing them. And King Herod heard of it in his, in his name, and he became well known. And people were saying, John the baptizer has risen from the dead, and that this is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others were saying, he is Elijah. And others were saying, he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he kept saying, John, whom I beheaded, has risen. For Herod himself had sent, and had John arrested and bound in prison, and on account of Heronius, the wife of his brother Philip, because he had married her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we're sandwiched in scripture right there between Jesus' rejection in his hometown after preaching and the death of John the Baptist. Right there in between of all that, the twelve disciples are sent to go out in pairs, two by two, into the world, and they've been instructed by Jesus to take nothing with them except for a staff and the clothes that are on their back. No money in their belt, an empty belt. And they are to perform miracles among them. A What a risk. What a giant risk to go out. Go tell people to repent. Don't take food, bag, or money. Be ready to depend on the hospitality of strangers. It's a pretty big risk, isn't it? What you can ease in the suffering, do so. And when you encounter those who don't like you along the way, shake the dust from your sandals as you leave. You know, when I consider the risk of the followers of Jesus they took for his sake, I'm humbled. And I concur with what the author says here. Embarrassed, really, when I've done anything remotely similar, I haven't. I get anxious when someone emails me their disappointment of a sermon or posts less than affirming comment on social media. Yet Jesus tells his closest to him who have already left what they know, family, friends, professions, community, to risk even more for the sake of the gospel message. Do not even take tuck a 20 in your belt in case of emergency. Just head out and start telling the enticing story of God's nearness and power. Recently, in the wake of another gun shooting on a school campus, gun violence in school, someone asked, what do we do? 
This question is oft repeated by well-intended people, themselves not subjects to daily fear or brand of brutality or anything like that. I've asked the question myself, what do we do? We pose it in the face of the world's problems, poverty, war, illness, injustice. What are we to do? However, too often we make this rhetorical question coupled with a shrug of the shoulders and a sigh of resignation. <sighs> Nothing we can do except pray, right? And yet discipleship in the gospel is anything but a rhetorical question or a theoretical question. Following Jesus is in fact a very literal thing, an actual physical thing. Faithfulness to God demands that we alter where we go, with whom we interact and what we take on the journey. Go, proclaim, teach, heal, cast out demons. Do not do this alone. Do not be weighed down by baggage, by the need to protect your possessions, your investments, your worldly security. Radical trust in the one who sends you is needed, but cues you or not to stuff your belt with all the things you think will keep you safe and apart from the pain of those whom you encounter along the way. Remember, Jesus got rejected by the people in his very own hometown, the ones who raised him. And John the baptizer is killed for his testimony. All right, so now head out to those people in places who need relief, oppression from poverty, illness, and all manner of suffering, right? Whew, discipleship is expensive and costly. Sobering, isn't it? Discipleship could, should cause you to stop and wonder if we are ready to do what God calls us to do. We cannot ask ourselves, what do we do, if we are not prepared to answer, hear the answer, that we are required to go with little more than the power of God and faith in Christ Jesus. Discipleship is anything but hypothetical. What are we willing to leave behind and take on to bear witness to the world of the gospel message, that it is an actual life-changing message? What will we do? That's some hard stuff to think about, isn't it? Can you imagine going on a journey without taking anything? That just gets my anxiety going. There's no way. I've got to have something more than just the clothes on my back. Why do you think Jesus told his disciples to go in pairs and not take anything with them. Hmm. When have you experienced having an empty belt? Did you need to depend on others? Did you need to depend on God? Let us pray. Lord Christ, as we prepare to celebrate your incarnation, we listen now for your call. You leave the confines of heaven and come down to earth as a vulnerable infant. You experience the rejection from those you love and suffer the violence of the cross, sacrificing everything for our sake and the sake of the world. And yet we take our discipleship casually and think that we can choose when and how to obey your commandments. Forgive our flippant flowing and strengthen our faith so that we will go where you send us. Leave behind anything that hinders our witness. May we be free to enact your healing with the most in need of hearing good news. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, go forth this Advent day blessed in the peace of Christ.